Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon to everyone who is watching this video. I am Dr. Nadia Husaini Zainal Abidin and I am from the Center of Foundation Studies for Agricultural Science of University Putra, Malaysia. And today I will be talking about tungsten trioxide as a saturable absorber for mode locked pulse laser generation. Now, before I share about the investigation, I would like to briefly describe on what is fiber lasers okay so fiber lasers can be divided into two types of output the first one being continuous wave laser which means that the emission of the light is continuous right and as you can see here the cats are playing with the laser pointer when you turn it on the emission or the light emission is continuous it doesn't it doesn't stop suddenly unless you switch it off that is a continuous wave laser now for if we look at this figure down here a continuous wave laser has an average power that is constant and it is continuously emitting over time the other hand a pulse laser given by this example as you can see here it is flickering that flickering is actually a break in time and during with each break in time it emits a short burst of energy as shown here it emits the first short burst of energy has a break and emits a similar short burst of energy has a break and this process goes on and on and on now this break in time looks as if it's flickering because it's super fast it is it can be as fast as picosecond it can be as fast as femtosecond and it can be as fast as attosecond the neat thing about pulse laser is that you can control the time that this short burst of energy emits you can control the penetration depth if you can control the peak power and you can also control the thermal heat that it produces by controlling the energy in the peak pulse the difference between making a continuous wave laser versus a pulse laser is that you require a modulator it is the same setup except that you require a modulator now what the, does the modulator do it automatically switches the fiber laser to be on and off on and off on and off so that you get that gap in time and you get that burst of energy so tungsten trioxide was investigated for its potential as a saturable absorber or as a modulator to convert continuous wave emission to pulse light laser emission. In general, tungsten trioxide belongs to the transition metal oxide group. This group has a high damage threshold, good mechanical strength and also high resistance to photo corrosion with great thermal and chemical stability. Specifically, to tungsten trioxide it has a wide absorption band as you can see here it has a wide transmitting band transmittance band as well it extends from 500 to 2100 nanometer so in terms of absorption and transmittance it is amazing it also has a wide band gap of 2.5 to 2.8 ev and its optical response can be tuned by controlling its crystallite size to be smaller, to be in nano size, to be micro size, uh, its thickness and its morphology as well as introducing defects. It also has an ultra fast response time which is favorable for our application which requires everything to be really really fast. Okay so how do we make the tungsten trioxide to behave like a modulator or in this case it is called a saturable absorber. So the strategy in this investigation was to break down the tungsten trioxide that was bought commercially uh, which was in large particle sizes in, it, in its bulk form and we break it down through liquid phase exfoliation technique it took for some time and this process broke down the tungsten trioxide to become nano sized particles so the nano sized particles are spherical in shape with an average size of 80.1 plus minus 3.2 nanometer and the sizes are within the range of 50 to 150 nanometers and it was then deposited on a tapered optical fiber so it was deposited in the thinnest region of the tapered optical fiber when light goes into the tapered fiber 
the taper fiber will produce an evanescent feel given by this glowy purple thing and the evanescent feel will interact with the WO3 PGMS nanocomposite and this is where the saturable absorption mechanism occurs. So we characterized the saturable absorber and it had a modulation depth of 1.85 and a non-linear saturable loss of 51.84 and also a saturation intensity of 2.15 megawatt per centimeter squared. This is laser setup. Without the saturable absorber, it will emit continuous wave laser emission. Now, when we integrated this saturable absorber into the laser cavity, we wanted to see if the pulse laser occurred, how fast is the pulse laser, is the performance great or is it bad. So this is the output measurement of the mode locked laser. So right off the bat, we know that the pulse laser works. But how good is it? So let's take a look at the spectral uh, optical spectrum. You can see that there is Kelly sidebands. This is typical for a soliton pulse emission. It has a 7.7 .7, uh, 3 dB bandwidth with a central wavelength of 1557 nanometer. This is in the C band. And then its autocorrelation trace tells us that it has a 998 femtosecond pulse duration. This is quite fast. And then the pulse strain tells us that the time between the pulses is 0 0.105 microsecond, which corresponds to the cavity uh, round trip time. And then it has a peak to extinction ratio of 46.38 dB. This is acceptable and considered stable for a pulse laser. And in terms of the average output power versus the pump power, um, the power grows steadily. Depends and C is when the pulse laser starts to happen. So the pulse laser starts to happen at around 50 milliwatt or so. And then we have the pulse energy. The maximum pulse energy recorded is around 4 nanojoules at 280 milliwatt pump power. So to conclude this presentation, I have demonstrated that tungsten trioxide, when broken down into nano-sized particles, demonstrate saturable absorption characteristics. And with that information, we fabricated a saturable absorber by depositing the tungsten trioxide on tapered optical fiber and then integrated that saturable absorber into a ring laser cavity. The pulse laser generation was in the C-band region and this investigation provides insights on simple fabrication technique which is aimed to cut down the cost of existing SA technology while providing enhanced durability and shelf life. With that, I end my presentation with Assalamualaikum and I hope you guys have a great day.